welcome back to Mrs. B's art class. We are learning about artist and author Faith Ringgold. And in her story, Tar Beach, we learned about how she flew over the city. And could she really fly? No, but she was dreaming about flying over those buildings and owning them flying over the ice cream factory so she can have ice cream every night, over the Washington Bridge because it was beautiful that she wanted to wear it like a necklace, and other places that she very much enjoyed because of her family and just dreaming about owning these things. Now, what we are going to be creating for this project is our own quilt block, a quilt block that will be made out of construction paper, magazine pieces, or scrap paper, or all of the above, whatever you have available to you at home. So I will be using a combination of construction paper and scrapbook paper. In quilt blocks and in Faith Ringgold's quilts, you will notice that there is a border around her quilt blocks, and that is where we are going to start today. So we are going to need scissors uh, for the inside of our quilt block when we build our buildings here. We are also going to need stick glue, a square piece of paper because again, we are making a quilt block. So a square piece of paper is what we'll need. And I already have some scrap pieces of paper pre-cut into little squares for my border, but you are more than welcome to cut magazine pieces out into little one inch squares. Um, so not very big. I'll show you a piece right here in our little bucket. Uh, let's see. We have this little one. It's a one inch by one inch block. So first we're going to start with a border of our quilt block. So what I mean by that is we're going to take our stick glue and we're going to apply glue to the back of our blocks like so, make sure you cover that up. And we're going to start with the edge here. Every quilt has a bit of a finish on the edge to kind of, uh, again, keep everything contained, all of the fabric. So I'm gonna go in and pick some more scraps up here. <laughs> and you can pick whatever you like, or you can pick random squares. For me, I'm just kind of picking out random squares. Hmm. All right. And I'm going to apply my squares. I'm also, if this is easier for you, you may apply a line of glue on the edge of your paper only, and then take paper blocks and glue them down. And of course, not every block I cut out was perfect. Some of them were more rectangles than they were anything else, and some of them were skinnier than others. But again, I'm gonna go in and add my little square blocks as I like them on here. Let's see, what else? Now that I have this row done, I'm going to turn my paper around and do this edge here, the bottom edge and the side edge. So we'll finish four edges out of our quilt blocks here and I'll try to make this as quick as possible so we can move on to the inside of our block. Now the great thing about Faith Ringgold as the author of the book is that she wrote this about her own life story. So she kind of gives us a little inside look at how it was to be a little girl uh, back in her time in the 1930s and 40s. And she talks about her family as well. And her family life is a little more different than ours um, because we are in a different time period here. But if you have any questions about it, do not hesitate to let me know. A lot of her quilt blocks, unlike regular quilts um, and regular quilt blankets, she puts a story into hers where she actually has people and buildings and other things showing in her quilt that isn't normally seen um, 
in traditional quilt making. So you don't really see pictures of people in quilt making. You see patterns, you see shapes, things like triangles, squares, uh, diamonds. Um, so you see a lot of that in traditional quilts or regular quilts. In Faith Ringgold's, you see uh, things like people, you see buildings, you see bridges, a little bit of everything. I made this quilt block for you. So now that I'm about to fill this up, the center of my quilt block is going to tell a little bit of a story about us. And instead of focusing on the things that Faith Ringgold would fly over, we're going to focus on what places we would fly over um, if we were allowed to fly over these places to own them. Um, so she talked about that if you can't get to a place, just imagine flying over it and it's yours. Um, that favorite place of yours can be a store. Um, it can be an ice cream place. Faith Ringgold mentioned having the ice cream factory to make sure that she had ice cream every single night. Um, you can have a favorite store. So if you like going to places like Walmart um, or if you like going to a relative's place, anything like that, that's what we're going to create for the middle part of our block. And let me finish this off here. Put the lid back on your glue stick. Put your scraps away while you don't need them. And voila, there is the border for our quilt block. It goes all the way around on all four edges. One, two, three, four. Remember that you can use magazine square pieces. You can cut things out of magazines into squares. You can use colored paper, you can use newspaper, whatever you have at home to make your border with. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna move on to using colored paper. And I'm gonna think about a place that I would like to fly over to own. So what would that look like for me? Um, and I'm thinking and thinking and thinking here. And I think my favorite place to go, especially with my daughter, is either the St. Louis Zoo or the City Museum. And the City Museum is my absolute favorite because you get to climb all over everything. So with that being said, I think that's what I'm gonna go with. And so you'll need your scissors. And we're going to be cutting out simple shapes out of our scrap pieces of paper or paper you have at home. I'm going to use rectangles to make the buildings for the city museum. So the city museum is actually a pretty big building with other things on top of it. So I'm going to make mine orange. And I'm going to use maybe this strip of a rectangle and put it down here and cut off the paper and that's going to be my other building there um the city museum has a ferris wheel on top of it so maybe uh for ferris wheel i'm going to go ahead and cut out a circle out of this dark blue paper and put it on top of this building here. Um, and then I might wanna make some windows for my buildings and a couple of chairs for my Ferris wheel there. Um, so maybe for my Ferris wheel, I'll make a bunch of small pink seats because I think that would look really neat. So I'm gonna go over with my scissors and into my pink scrap piece of paper and I'm gonna cut a couple of seats out, um, maybe a few actually. I don't wanna have just two seats, that would be silly. And I'm not even looking at a picture of the city museum. I am simply trying to remember as much as I can of what it looked like. And with my glue stick here, I'm going to whew, 
take the lid off and I'm going to glue some of my pieces down so I don't lose them. So on the back of this construction piece of paper, I'm going to add some glue because this one's gonna be the first part of my building here. Ooh, this is sticky. Make sure you put something down on your table as glue sticks can get a little messy. If you use regular glue, you can use dots of glue to stick things down on paper. Hmm? Make sure that your buildings are nice and glued down. So make sure they are on there all the way. Um, my Ferris wheel is gonna go right there. I'm gonna go ahead and stick the glue on my circle and then stick my Ferris wheel here. I'm gonna stick the seats on my Ferris wheel. So there's a seat there. And again, I'm using simple shapes to create these things. I'm not getting too complicated at all. Um, just sticking the stuff on there using squares, rectangles, circles, triangles, diamonds, whatever you want to use to create your favorite place that you would like to fly over and own. What would that favorite place look like for you? Would that be an ice cream shop? Would it be an amusement park? If it was an amusement park, which amusement park would it be? If it was a city, what city would it be? Think about the places that you would fly over. If it's not a city, then maybe it's out in the woods or maybe a lake. Where would the place you want to fly over be? Alrighty, put that there for my Ferris wheel. As you can see, this starts getting a little messy. And I'm going to go ahead and cut out windows for my building and do all of that as well. But I don't want to hold your creativity up on how you're going to create your uh, place that you would fly over. So go ahead and work on that. I would leave a little space to draw a little person. And in the end results, I will include that in the Google Classroom as well so you can see how I ended my project. Uh, thank you again for tuning in. You have a wonderful time creating. Bye-bye.